Hey guys, this is Ryan. This is the first tutorial that I've ever done, so just please bear with me just a little bit. I just want to give you guys a quick editing tutorial, kind of basics of how I go through an edit on a photo, and my basic workflow using Lightroom CC, I believe it is. Yep, we're going to work with this photo right here this is Jen so how I usually go about it I usually in camera I'm usually shooting on sh uh, shade white balance so it does give me an already like a kind of warm look to it and that is my editing style already is quite warm so we're gonna not mess with the temperature and tint at all but the very beginning of it like I of what I like to start with is going down to just the lens corrections remove chromatic aberration which usually takes away some if there's some um, I don't even there's like some purple and purple like fringes don't even listen to me right now but just put it on and I usually like to enable profile corrections as well So what that does, it just kind of like fixes what the lens distortion is giving you. And then, yeah, we'll work from there. From there, generally, I always just like to take the highlights almost all the way down to get some details back in the sky in the background, as you can see. But we're going to bring some of that uh, that light back in later on. I like to do, I just like mess around with a little bit. I'm looking at the histogram up here a little bit just to see if anything is overexposed, which you can see if you bring the whites up, that white triangle it starts to turn. If you click hold it over right here, it'll show you all the overexposed parts. So if you just bring it back down until the color in the triangle goes away, then nothing is technically overexposed. I'm going to bring the blacks down a little bit to add a little bit more contrast. Then maybe the shadows up to bring some more detail into the dress. Into the dress, what is this? A skirt. I usually like to bring the clarity down to negative five. Just a, just a, a little bit more softness to the image. And now with this, these tone curves these are the secrets that I've never shown anybody before, but I'm pretty sure everybody already does this. So it's just a typical S curve, um, a really subtle one. I don't really like to go overboard. And my Lightroom is a little messed up. My cursor does not like to stay on the knob. It gets stuck. I also like to bring the highlights at the top down just to cut off the the highlights so they're not just like overbearing and we're just going to add a tiny bit of fade into the into the shadows by bringing up this left end of the curve which affects the uh, the shadows and all the dark areas like it's just going to be basically in the in the skirt and in this dark parts of her hair and then from there I do like to, this is just a typical thing that I like to do with my editing style, I just like to add a little bit of green into the shadows. So by doing that I'm just going to bring this left side of the slider up and it's going to just add green into the shadow. So if you like bring it the other way it's going to take green out which is a, it's like a purpley kind of red. I don't even know what that means. Magenta? Sure. Let's go with magenta. So add a little tiny greens. And then just a tiny bit of blue. You're going to take out a little bit of blue to make it a little bit more warmer just to fit my kind of style. Just a little bit everywhere. I like to, with the blues, I kind of like to my Lightroom does not like to work with me. If 
for the blues and the curve, I like to just like boot everything in the mid-tones to the shadows to the darks, make it a little bit more warm, and we'll mess with the highlights and the uh, split tone. So now with the, the um, just individual colors, how I like to do it, um, the hue, saturation, and luminance, I like to see all of them and all. I know like I know some people mess around them like this or they just have the luminance and they go to each but I usually just click on color and just click this all button right here so I just have them all available to me a little bit easier for me and I kinda just end up going like through one by one see what they do like there's obviously gonna be a little bit of red in her skin a tiny bit in her skin like in her hands and in her nose so what I'll do there I'll just usually bring it up cause when you, you have light from behind a subject and it's gonna go into her fingers, it's gonna like shine through and it's gonna like show like the blood in her fingers so it's gonna make it a lot more red than I normally would like so I usually bring that luminance up just to make it a little bit more skin toned and maybe the saturation down just a like literally just a tiny bit, just negative five and the orange usually messes with her skin and with now like the jacket and uh, the the sunlight a little bit so I like to this is a more brighter, a little bit brighter of an image, so I'll bring these luminance of the orange up a tiny bit, and yeah, let's just stick with that right now. And the yellow is gonna affect the the background, yeah. Now well, the the sunlight is usually pre, it's usually yellow. Um, right now, I kind of like it because I don't, I really don't like overexposed skies, which it is right now. So I'm just gonna keep it just a little bit more because I like that light a lot coming from behind her and just maybe increase the saturation just a little bit as you can see that light coming through her hair just to increase it just a little bit maybe make it a little bit more orange just a tiny bit there we go greens there's like a tiny bit of green in the back like the back left and in the water I'm just gonna increase it just a little bit just to just to do it and I don't really like heavy green so I usually end up making them more of a yellow and then yeah I just keep on going through each slider just bring that there's some colors in there you can obviously tell that some will work and some won't because the colors aren't going to be in there um, so this one I'm going to bring it up a little bit and then I usually like to turn my blues to a kind of a, a teal aqua kind of color let me drop the saturation just a little bit there's not going to be anything in these purples, there's not going to be anything with magenta. So there's that. Now I'm going to come back to split toning. I usually save that for last. For sharpening, I usually just like to keep that at 50. And there's this other thing, I like to use dehaze. It's kind of like um, another contrast. So we're just gonna. I usually like to bump that up if you bring the dehaze up, because like when you bring the dehaze down, it just like adds. I don't really understand it that much, but if it, the image is like foggy kind of or I guess hazy by the name, if you increase some of this, it just takes it away and just adds a little bit more. Just makes it a little darker and just brings the blacks to a little bit blacker, if if you if you will. So I usually yeah, I like to be around like 10 to 15 for that. So it's looking pretty good. Maybe bring just a tiny bit. I'm usually like, yeah, barely any uh, vignette. Just a tiny amount. And so this is where it's the fun part for me is split toning. I love split toning. Like I said before, I'm a very warm kind of guy. And this is a very warm photo. So for the highlights, I'm going to like to keep a very kind of like warm color we're gonna change it don't worry I know it's very like yellowy and kinda gross right now and then for the shadows as well I like to keep it a uh, a warm as well maybe take these highlights down like a lot and then I usually like to split tone it just depending on but make it a little bit warmer but like over to the left just to balance so you can't really tell the difference when you um, 
are prioritizing highlights over on the right side of the balance and the shadows a little bit you can when the colors are the same. But let's just desaturate just a tiny bit to my to your preference how orange you actually want it to be. Alright, that's a uh, pretty good. Maybe not as there we go. Bring that back up a little bit, take that one out. So that's pretty good. There's an one a couple more things I do and then we're good to go. Um, so for this, since there's this light in the back, I've been starting to like to accentuate that. And by that, I'm going to come over to this radial filter and I'm going to, I want to bring out the color a little bit more in that light. So I'm going to choose a kind of an orangey yellow color. And then also add some, you know how I showed you the dehaze kind of like brightens it up, kind of like fades it like a lot. We're going to like sub take some of that dehaze out. And so we're going to make this right here and make sure when you're on this, you have it on inverted. You have that invert max because if you don't, it's going to go on the outside of the image or outside of the radial filter. So you click invert mask. If I usually have the feather all the way on or else it's just going to be that right at the end. So feather it all the way up. And I'm usually gonna, if you hold shift and drag it out, it'll um, equally make the circle the same size when it gets bigger and smaller. So we're gonna do that and I like to just place it. I don't want it to do too much to her face but have a little bit accent so you can kind of see why I'm moving it. So I'm just maybe it a like half wave it's gonna be affecting her face like about right there and so if you just click this toggle button you can see the difference that it does just it just accents it just a little bit more if you had done so you don't have to see if you hit done and then go back to the radial filter you can click the toggle button again so you don't have to see that circle and just see like what it does it's a I'd say I it's like a subtle difference but I'd say it just adds like just that much more to the photo and there's just one more thing that I do usually to every photo that has a subject in it. If you can see their face, is that I like to add, just like smooth their skin out a little bit with this preset that is basically based off the one that comes in Lightroom. I just tweaked it just a little bit. And this I usually have the clarity down negative, like around uh, negative 40 and sharpness down at negative 40. And then I just like to just go around on all the skin, you don't have to be too particular because it doesn't do a lot but there's like a subtle difference that is made just to smooth it out a little bit more make it a tiny bit more cinematic, a little more editorial eh, maybe not but this is just something I do to every photo that has a face in it whether it needs it or not I've just gotten in the habit of doing it just to make sure, just sometimes, yeah, just go down and make a quick one. And you hold it, you can hover over there just to see what it's affected. And that's basically, basically it for that. I don't like to go on the mouth or the eyes or eyebrows. I just do everything around that. And to view it, uh, the final image, I like to push F on the keyboard and I'll just bring it up just to see if I'm pretty happy with it, which I I am, I'm pretty happy with that. You can see like the before and after down here, see the difference? That is the before and after of previous photos. I, this was an old edit. That was not it's the same before and after, that was the one that I was um, basing it off of what I already edited. But this one is more vibrant. I kind of like this one better than the original. So there you guys go. I hope that helped. If you guys have any questions, comments, anything, leave them down below and I'll make sure to get back to you or on what you want to see for next time. Thanks guys. Have a good one.